Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about module level get adder, which is a feature that was added in Python 3.7. I'm going to walk you through the two main use cases. Uh, I mean, you can also use it for crazy hacks as well. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. I wanted to show you how it works as well. Okay, so in normal Python classes, uh, you can have a class and it can have a get adder. And it will be passed an attribute, and you can you know return some value based on this attribute. It'll only get called if there isn't already an attribute. So let's say the init self x and then self x equals x. Sure, whatever. Um, unrecognized attributes adder. So let's just put a little print in here. Uh, so if you access x, it won't go through get adder. Uh, get adder is kind of your fallback for other attributes. So um, you can return whatever you want. So let's say we you know, make make a string as a result. And now if we were to build one of these objects and we do print c dot x, you'll see we get whatever. And you could, you know, unknown, unknown attribute here. Okay, so this is normal get adder and how it works in Python. Uh, this is not the point of today's video, but I wanted to, oh, I forgot to actually give it a value. Um, but I wanted to show you, you know, how how it works. Um, so this is normal get adder. Uh, what module level get adder allows you to do is do the same approach, but instead have it at the module scope. This way you can import names from a module that may not be statically defined, uh, may need to be dynamically defined, or you can do things like uh, issue deprecation warnings or all sorts of other stuff. Um, it was added because you could do this before by uh, assigning things into sys.modules. So if we did uh, sys.modules double under name equals C, so just stick this random object in for our current module. Um, and so now if we do import T, we need to actually import sys as well first, of course. Uh, import t and then you know you can access t.x that works fine uh, but if you access some unknown attribute it can go through the same get adder lookup however this was kind of inconvenient and hacky and there were some cases where this breaks imports and it was just kind of fiddly and so uh, you know there surely is a better way to do this and the better way to do this in python 3.7 and above is to define a module level get adder it works very similar to the class level get adder, uh, except there is no self parameter. It is just your attribute name, and you can return whatever you want based on that. So if we do return unknown adder as our formatted value here, now normally what you would want to do is only return the attributes that you know and raise attribute error in the other cases, uh, but this is just a silly example. We take the same thing as before and we do t.x or well, x is unknown. If we do t.c, it's that uh, global c instance that we had. Um, and if we you know, access whatever, we're going to get back the, the callback from our get adder. Uh, one, or I think the most important use case of this is for issuing deprecation warnings for only a little part of your module. Uh, this is actually one of the use cases that def uh, get adder in Python files. Uh, this is actually one of the use cases. Yeah, PyTest is the only thing that's using this that uh, I maintain at the moment. Uh, here is one example, source PyTest Python. Uh, get adder. Yes. Okay, so here's an example from PyTest where uh, PyTest wanted to deprecate this specific name from this module, but not anything else. Um, also, this name isn't necessarily constructed in any way. It's just referenced. And so putting a deprecation warning inside this class wasn't enough to uh, actually trigger any deprecation warnings. So PyTest wanted this to show up on import time. And so the way to do that, or the way PyTest did this, is to define a module level get adder, uh, allow it to get this fallback name. If it's specifically this one instance uh, name, then we can return a value and issue a warning. Otherwise, we can raise an attribute error. And so this allows you to still be able to use this uh, but give a deprecation warning. That's one use of this that I think is the most important use case. The other is magic. <laughs> and I say magic, I mean things like uh, building classes based on the attribute or the, yeah, the attribute name, which is what PyTest uses it for in this file. 
And if you look at get adder here, uh, not that get adder, but this one, uh, actually this get adder calls that other one. Uh, so what this does here is based on the attribute that's retrieved from the module, it's going to get a special error subclass that's built dynamically and it's a little complicated and uh, has a fake module and there's all sorts of fun stuff here. But this is how the uh, the error, mod uh, error mapping is done. So it's based on the uh, the error name. So if we were to uh, pip install pytest and from pi.error import, I think this is how they're named. Yeah, so this is a uh, e no end. This class was generated dynamically uh, just based on that import and based on that module level get error. So those are kind of the two use cases. Uh, my recommendation, if you're gonna define a module level get editor, which generally, <laughs> generally I wouldn't recommend, um, also define a module level dir at the same time. Uh, this is the same advice that I give for building get adder and classes, which is that if you don't want to ruin tab complete with get adder, make sure that you're also providing the list of names that you could possibly get in dir. Now, of course, this is impossible if they're you know an unbounded set of names, but usually, like you know, in the pytest case, I should have implemented a uh, <laughs> a double under dir uh, because I know all of the error numbers. Uh, I could have you know, easily put those in a double under dir down here. Like imagine if I did dir uh, and then dir and dir here now. I think this, I think this would have worked um, or something close to this. I probably would have to filter out the things that aren't actually error numbers. Uh, but dir will show up in tab complete. So if you were to uh, import this module, let's just say that it returns foo. Uh, import t and then we tab complete, you'll see that this foo shows up in the dir there. Now, of course, this is not the right way to do this. I would do dir plus this. Uh, that way you get the default names as well. I think that works. I hope that doesn't uh, recurse. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I guess we could do list globals. That would be another way to do this. Uh, import t t dot tab complete. Yeah, okay. So now we have all of the names that are available there. So this is probably how I would implement dir. Um, you know, if this was the only dynamic attribute that get adder was providing. Uh, but anyway, that's new in 3.7. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.